I had never met her before. But eventually, I did after watching these two videos on social media. Gladys Muihaki is her name. She is one of thousands of Kenyans weighed down by the medical bills of a relative. A very familiar Kenyan story. Anyone would dread receiving such news. What Esther did not know was that the journey ahead of her would require more than just emotional and physical strength. Being a Kenyan who had many times had to raise money for a loved one's treatment, I had imagined this struggle many times before. But then Gladys said something that cut to the heart of Kenya's healthcare crisis. In Kenya, in ya matajiri, maskini kama sisi, atuna yenyewe. This is a day like many others in Nairobi, Kenya's capital. Busy, noisy, normal. Living in a city like this, I have seen many weekends like this come and go. But today, it's different for me. I am on my way to meet Gladys in Riruta Satellite, a settlement on the outskirts of Nairobi where she now lives with her ailing sister. Inside this little room made of iron sheets, Gladys, Esther and the five children they have between them have made a home. If they could talk, these thin walls would have a most painful story to tell. On this day, I found Esther lying in bed, unable to move or sit up. Her pain, she tells me, is now part of her daily life. <laughs> Esther, a once vibrant young lady, now lived with nothing but pain, sadness and constant tears in her eyes. <laughs> Kenyatta. That would be the beginning of what they tell me has been a most painful journey in search of medical treatment. From there, Kambio.
With five children under her care, Gladys couldn't leave home to be with her sister. The neighbors that took Esther to the hospital couldn't afford the money required to get her admitted. And eventually, they too had to leave. Esther, did you have cash out? I was like, I'm going to go. I was like, I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to Sina la kufanya na sina hiyo pesa nilikuwa nimebeba 700 tena nimepata imepa. Mm -hmm. ita, tuta, itabidi turudi home tugojee tu Mungu juu mimi sina la kufanya. Her tears and desperation on this day Gladys tells me would eventually get Esther an admission at the hospital. But this took the intervention of a stranger who offered to pay for the required admission fee. Sisi <laughs> wenye hawatibiwi mali wanakaa huko Kenyatta ukiingia hapo mm. kuna kalums wenye wa, mm. uh, wakipewa rusa wanakaa hapo mm. alimaliza hapo one week wiki mbili ndio alikuwa kwa bed mm. wiki mbili akakaa pale kwa hiyo room ni kwa hiyo room alikuwa anapata hakuna hata pain kula hapana nilikuwa nampelekea mimi mwenyewe Esther would later be discharged and told by her doctors to come back with 20,000 Kenyan shillings in order to start chemotherapy. But they couldn't raise that kind of money. When I met her, seven months had passed since her diagnosis, but she had not started chemotherapy. <laughs> Their struggle is a living contradiction to the words in Kenya's celebrated constitution. Chapter 4 of the Bill of Rights directs that every Kenyan citizen has a right to the highest attainable standard of health, including a right to healthcare services. But these are just words to Esther and Gladys. When you are on a person, you are not going lakini wewe juuna uko tu pale tu umejikuja juuna eh hmm? unaacha tu yani unawekwa tu mahali juuna pesa nini ambayo inakufanya unasikia umehuzunika sana ukienda hospitali na, na upati hata uwezo kabisa nini inakufanya unasikia umehuzunika juu pesa juu nikikuwa na pesa ningetengeneza Pain is a very bad picture for me to, to the extent that if you are if you're not wealthy, you have no job, you have no parcel of land, you will never, you, if you go to a hospital, you will only receive painkillers, what we call the placebo effect. In medical terms, when you have a pain, just let's slow down your death, but take this so that you can heal slowly, but wait for your death at home. It's a very sad thing. A very sad and very Kenyan story. But Kenya's government claimed that it had a solution. About 100,000 Kenyans every year go below the poverty line because of trying to pay for health from their pockets. 
Kenyans will be able to have specialized and high-tech medical tests and therapies in their counties. By investing in cancer treatment, we shall decentralize the cancer treatment at KNH and Moi Rifaro Hospital to the selected 94 hospitals countrywide. That was in February 2015 at the launch of the 38 billion shillings medical leasing project, the managed equipment services. By implementing this project, it means that those people who have been queuing and not make, make seeing the light of day, they will be able to be treated at the county hospitals countrywide. With a promise to bring specialized healthcare services closer to the people, the project would see two hospitals per county equipped with modern equipment divided into these categories. Lot 1, theater equipment. Lot 2, theater and CSSD equipment. Lot 5, renal equipment. Lot 6, ICU equipment. And Lot 7, radiology equipment. So the idea of having equipment, modern equipment, to assist in medical care was one of is a primary agenda, both in the CBA, signed between the doctors and national government, and part of the larger scheme in terms of improving healthcare in the country, was to have advanced equipment. Patients who develop complications such as uh, kidney failure, We've been referring them to Eldorin or to Nairobi. Now, the thought behind them, yes, in my understanding, having been part of it, was to bring these services closer to the counties. And indeed, they did, they did because uh, a number of hospitals received equipment that they never had, including our own hospital, Nangisa County Referral Hospital. As the leaders of health in the county, we thought it, it, it sounds like an interesting idea because we do need equipment. At least our hospitals did need equipment. And uh, the way that uh, it was presented to us was that uh, there was some um, pri private public partnership that was being organized and the equipment was to be leased for certain kinds of services. As promised, equipment was indeed delivered. Now, at least two hospitals in most, if not all counties, have modern infrastructure and can deliver services they previously could not. I have a particular case involving my uncle who used to come to Nairobi in 2013-2014 for dialysis. Twice a week, each used to cost 7,500 per session. He no longer comes to Nairobi. He goes for his dialysis in uh, Makweni Water. Uh, before the equipment was delivered, especially the X-ray, we used to refer most, or actually all our patients who required ultrasound or x-ray. used to refer them to the nearest hospitals, that is Kaplo, Kapkatet, uh, Longisa, and also Tenwek. For example, those mothers requiring emergency cesarean sections, uh, referring them again for another 80 kilometers, that means the operation might be done one hour to two hours later. Uh, that, and that stops being an emergency. So at least here, we are able to, once uh, an emergency is declared, for example, uh, a mother requiring a cesarean section, we are able to do it within the next 10 minutes or so. The delivery of modern equipment to parts of Kenya that hadn't seen this kind of an investment was a relief to medics across Kenya. But still, something was wrong. I know that a number of patients have been, have, uh, have been uh, provided with services from, from some of the equipment that has been put in place. But if I was looking at it holistically, I, I think we could have done better. We did need to improve things like dialysis, and yes, we needed uh, the ICU for those kind of patients. But when I look at the kind of healthcare challenges that we were facing, I would have done business differently if I were given the chance. To understand why there was such discomfort, we need to go back to the beginning. In 2014, Kenya's Ministry of Health reported that it had conducted a healthcare needs assessment across the country. Through this, they would refine the health sector as well as improve quality of services offered to the Kenyan people, especially those in rural areas. At least, that's what they said. The facts tell a completely different story. I'm not sure whether a needs assessment was done before the 
delivery of the equipment. But uh, I would say it has, the equipment has partly sorted out the needs for our patients uh, in this area. So the current bed capacity of this hospital is uh, 20. Actually, all the 20 is for maternity cases. Uh, but uh, we need to expand this hospital up to uh, a bed capacity of up to 200, so that we are able to handle all the issues. Uh, bearing in mind that these are sub-county hospitals, we serve uh, South Lake sub-county, and also neighboring counties, that is Narok and uh, Nyamira. Uh, we are currently doing only cesarean sections because of the challenge of inpatient capacity. Yeah, so we are not able to do any other operations like for the other patients. Actually, most counties only learned from the letters from the minutes that we are bringing you, one, two, three, four. I don't remember at any point, if it was not probably at another level, where at my level as a doctor, I was asked what you really think we needed in this county or in this hospital. The question of need means County X should have been given the opportunity to determine what is the need at that particular county. What is the need in Isiolo is not the need in Makweni and is also not the need in Makweni now, uh, or, or Machakos. We deal with a lot of primary health care problems and yes, of course, we need to have hospitals at work. Uh, we're not knocking, uh, denying that. But we felt that uh, perhaps uh, if there was a lot more discussion uh, allowed, there's, uh, 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 we would have focused a lot on really fixing the base the primary healthcare base, and then to see what else would we need to do as uh, uh, service providers to have hospitals that would take care of what cannot be handled at the primary care level. In terms of healthcare, you would target a county like Nairobi that has a high population, you would target Kiambu that has a high, very high population. Kakamega with high population Nakuru to have possibly more equipment. And a county like Lamu with less equipment or less hospitals to be equipped. But they, it is uniform. They have done it uniformly. On paper, the project would ideally offer the national government a sustainable budgeting plan. Through leasing of the medical equipment, they would cut down on huge expenses which they would otherwise incur from buying and equipping the public hospitals across Kenya. But these was yet another broken promise. The modern equipment would end up costing the counties more. Some facilities which the city community don't even have power, and probably even don't have power up to now. But what worries me most is the value for money. Even in its current form, what exactly are we paying for now? So that uh, we can also explain to the public, because right now it's very difficult to explain to the public what actually we are paying for. It's just something not right about that. <laughs>